All right, this is how all this started. Babriski, the popular crossdresser in Nigeria, was arrested and tried by the EFCC for money laundering and Naira abuse and was subsequently sentenced to jail for six months. One day, the following video was published wherein Bobriski had been having an issue with someone from whom he had borrowed money and was now refusing to pay. This person took the matter to very dark man who has been helping people recover their money from influential people. Influential people in Nigeria who both facedly hold on to other people's money because they have the platform and popularity and use it to bully and oppress others. Watch the video and see how it unfolds up to this point. Today is Thursday, September 26th. All right, Bob Risky, Bob Risky, Bob Risky. I will advise you that after you see this post, you should do the needful. But you being you, I know that after you see the post, you want to prove stubborn. You want to prove that you don't have shame. Yes, we go drag, we go drag, and no get shame. But this is beyond dragging, right? This is beyond dragging. If after this post, you don't do the needful, let me tell you what will happen. A lot of things will go wrong for you. You might lose connection. You might lose friend. And everybody that is involved in what I have, everybody where they involved, they go suffer. You go regret why you did do this thing where you did do. I'm just telling you the truth, yeah? So after this post, you should do the needful. Now, Nigerians, some people go feel that they winch hunt them, maybe because of me and him beef. No, this is my platform. A victim don't come run to me. You understand? Don't tell me, see, see what thing go down. And it's not fair. Some people cannot treat you nice. And when it's time to give them back, their thing, you not give them, making them go through pains. Do you understand? This is my platform. The person don't come with me. I will just say it the way it is. Then I'll wait for your response. But if I contact the person and you don't do the needful, no problem. Then we get right into business. Do you understand? And also to his friends. If when I watch the video finish, I will not decide say when I want help him. The help can come from anybody. It does not necessarily need to come from Bobriski. When I feel help him, pay this person this money. And everything, nothing will come out. We'll be in peace. But if you people feel like, uh, if Bobriski feel like, okay, yes, this is dragging, no problem. I'm not gonna drag it. You will learn. <laughs> you will learn the very hard way. So what did Bobriski do? Let me get right into it. This is um, a four million naira transfer that was sent to Bobriski Kuda bank account. As you can see, it was sent on the 19th of June 2024 when Bobriski was still with um, EFCC, and it was sent around 2:11. As you can see, his name. Um, is there Okunaya Abiola? So the person sends this money because of the reason Bobriski gave to him, which I'm not going to say now because there's no need to say it right now. Um, Bobriski agreed that he's going to pay back at a particular period of time. So the guy now sent his account number and he said, Bob, please send the money here, GT Bank, with his name. Bobriski said, Noted. Bobriski said, Bank are not open because of the protest. Then, um, the guy said, are you sure? I spoke with my account manager this morning and the transaction was concluded. Well, help me do it ASAP. But Brisky said, honestly, this is not fair. When you were giving me this money, you didn't tell me you will give me this pressure now. You asked when I'm returning it. I remember telling you September. Because you need money now, you are putting me under pressure. Now, um, the guy now said, uh, but recently said, the guy now said, September, how? I told you I need the money for the house I'm planning to buy. If I don't need it, I won't be asking. But Risky now sent a voice note. That one will play later. Now, um, on September 2nd, which since Bob Risky says September, September 2nd, the guy sent account number, but Risky did not respond. September 3rd, the guy said, Hey, Bob, I'm seriously in need of this money, but Risky did not respond. September 4th, the guy now sent another message and said, Dear Bob Risky, this is a reminder for the return of the loan amount of 4 million naira as agreed. The due date for the return is on September 1st. Kindly use these attached account details to send me the fund. GT Bank, thanks for your cooperation. But Risky still didn't respond. Today is Friday. Please don't piss me off. But Risky now said, This is not nice at all. You will get your money. I'm working on it. I shouldn't piss you off. Almost see life. It's fine. You will get your money. The guy said, I told you I need the money. You have made me look like a liar. But Risky said, Soon. The guy said, Please, I need the money today. If not, you won't like the outcome. No cap. If you remember from June, June, July, August, September, after two months. Now Bobriski is out of prison, right? So Bobriski said, go and do your worst. 
The guy said, okay. But Risky said, don't try to me. I hate the sound of that. The guy said, I won't go back and forth with you because I didn't go back and forth when I helped you. This is your true behavior. I simply told you what I needed the phone for, but you don't, um, true behavior, but you don't care. You have 24 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, Naso Bobriski turn everything to blackmail. Obviously, because he knows, say, people know they like gay matter. You understand? He quickly blackmailed the guy. See what Bobriski responded. Bobriski said, when you kiss me and smoosh me, did you give me any money? Are you mad? He don't change him. He went on saying, your visit to Nigeria, that you kiss me in Lagos, did you give me anything? I didn't ask you for money. No, because I am fucking okay. If not EFCC, you think I'm going to ask you for money? You are typing all this message to someone help you post flyer without collecting anything from you. Wow. Go ahead and call me out. I will respond to you on IG. You know I am shameless and I don't care. Blocked. You will get your money. I have your account. I don't want to look like someone who is ungrateful, but threatening me that you will give me 24 hours is the height of it. Bye. I am waiting for you to post or call me out. Okay. But Brisky twisted everything immediately just because he does not want to pay. Somebody help you at the time of your need. Pay the person back. You disco the person. When it's time for the person to collect the money, you now blackmail the person that you are going to expose the person that you and the person kiss. You understand? Robbing is stigma. That means you want to publicize. So the person will fear no collect money. Now let me continue. The guy now said, you have 24 hours. But Risky said, okay, I'm waiting. The guy said, don't say I didn't warn you. This is not about calling you out. Believe me, you won't like this. You have 24 hours, right? So, but Risky say, um, the guy said, someone like, then the guy continued. The guy said, I help you when you need it. And this is your payback. Well, good luck. But Risky said, I'm waiting for your 24 hours, meaning, but Risky does not want to pay. The guy said, someone like you is the reason why people don't help people. You have made your intentions clear, but you won't like my action. But Risky said, I'm not going to reply you only if you do your worst. You're threatening me. You're wicked. The guy said, I'm wicked. Wow. But Risky said, yes, you are wicked. Ever since I've known you, I've always been nice to you. And dare open your mouth to tell me you give me 24 hours. Do you understand? Then he now talk, 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 talk. The guy said, um, I told you I needed it. The people I promised to pay them two days ago already see me as a liar. I told you from jump that blah, 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 blah. So they went back and forth, went back and forth, went back and forth. Until Bob Risky now said, you went to report me to Damola. I never knew you were like this. I was told you are going to report me to Very Dark Man. Please go ahead. I am here to drag your generation. The guy said, no more discussion. But Risky went on, you are stupid. Go ahead, shame on you. Go and do your worst. All these things are exactly what is getting me angry. Gosh, I never knew you were this stupid. The guy said, okay, I am waiting for you to report me to Very Dark Man. Please tell him you had an affair with me because I am going to drag the living daylight out of you. Continue blackmailing the, the guy. Cut the long story short. The blackmail continued and continued and continued. But Risky is refusing to pay. <laughs> Now, there's one part where the guy said, if Nigerian law doesn't work, I will show you I'm an American citizen and there's law here that stand and they are effective. But Risky said, go ahead and do everything that makes you happy. I don't give a F. Since six years, I've not been able to enter America. So nothing is new to me. You won't get one cobble from that money if you keep threatening me. I had intention of giving you some money before, but you feel threatening me will scare me. Like seriously, who is who in his right sense threatening his friend? Not just a friend, though. Someone you had something to do with. You kiss your friend. Do you romance your friend? You had uh, the God threatening me. The guy said, listen, I promise you one thing. As long... As all I did for you is to help you. And this is what I get. I will make sure you beg for everything you have done. You won't see it coming. Now, um, as you can see, obviously, the guy is being blackmailed after he rendered help to Bob Risky at the time of his need. This guy don't deserve this thing, right? Um, Bob Risky, the truth is that the law in Nigeria works. You understand? I will point out the law of blackmailing to you at the due time. Do you understand? But for now, I like your stubbornness, right? Uh -huh. Now, Nigerians, people have seen 
You understand? This is my platform. This is what I do. I use my platform to help people get back their money, especially when they are being scammed. Do you understand? And especially when it has to do with people that have influence and people that can hide the truth and eat people's money and nobody can do anything about it. So, but Risky, I'm giving you just um, six or uh, four hours after this video. And if not, what will happen next? You're not gonna like them at all. <laughs> and you will learn, and you will learn the hard way. I swear to God, you will pay. <laughs> Don't play. You're gonna learn, and you will learn the hard way. Now, you guys know that I talk about the psychology of how and why people do the things they do. What do you think happened next? This person checked it and decided that he will do what he needed to do to get Bob Risky to return that money. He weighed it and saw that he was definitely in a position to win this psychological warfare because he was armed for battle. But what happened is that Bobrisky miscalculated. Bobrisky chose to remain adamant. He remained adamant because he was banking on the psychology of the person not wanting to be exposed. But because he knows nothing about psychology, except thinking about how he can manipulate others, he didn't realize that exactly that will be the reason why someone might decide to damn all consequences. And that's what happened. And so, Very Dark Man releases the next video. In the past, I've already told you how VDM is doing much more for the country than any of the popular Nigerian pastors with huge platforms have done. This is a man who is actually doing God's work, defending the helpless and bringing justice to many in a country where they otherwise would be helpless and no one would even take the time to listen to them or to listen to their cries where people will be mercilessly crushed by those who have the money to put the law in their pockets. And you can find that video in the link that I will leave under this video. And I want you to please watch that video. I want you to become a lover and supporter of VDM in any way that you can, if you love justice and if you love fairness. And if you know that you want justice and fairness to also be your portion in this world and the portion of your de descendants, now I want you to shut your eyes for even just a minute, if even just a minute, and say a quick prayer for VDM. I want you to pray for VDM every morning when you wake up and you're saying prayers for yourself. I want you to say a prayer for VDM every night before you go to sleep. If you love justice and fairness, and if you want them to be your portion as well. You know, this platform is about conscious empowerment, and that is what VDM is doing. You know how the country has been, you know how people have suffered People who are unable to speak out when they are being taken advantage of. VDM has done so much in the past over a year, I think. Yeah, he's been doing this all on his own. Yeah, because I want him to always be on your mind. I want you to, I want to imprint him on your mind. I know that you guys are on this platform for a different thing, but in the end, it's all about conscious empowerment. So I want us to become people who are supporting him, even if it's only in spirit. Do you understand? I want you to be a spiritual supporter of VDM. Right. So what has just happened? VDM has just re released a voice recording allegedly implicating Bobriski and Femi Falano, the senior advocate of Nigeria, um, a human rights activist, as well as EFCC. I want you to listen to the recording. Yes, all right. In respect to Bob Risky, what I'm about to post now, um, a lot of names will be mentioned. Um, these are people that I also respect, and I believe a lot of Nigerians respect them as well. I am very, very disappointed in the agencies that are involved in this, and um, I believe that this call recording that I'm about to play, even Bob Risky will not expect it. <laughs> that is what is crazy. But all the people that will be mentioned, I don't care. You understand? I don't care. And from today, no longer respect for all of you. You understand? Because all of them are the same. And it's pretty obvious that in Nigeria, the law only work against the poor people. You understand? Now, after this video, I would expect that the EFCC would do a deep investigation on everybody that is involved in this case. And also, they will bring the whole officers that participated in this and collected and spent this money that is involved. Thank you very much. So I will start by playing um, the call. As you can see, it is a call. Listen. Papa, you know, I'm a very big influencer. I have over 5 million followers on my Instagram. So, my Facebook. And they're paying me uh, on my Facebook every month. So, 
I'm okay. So they were like, yeah, all those money cannot still make me buy a house of 450 million around Pinock. And we are staying in a Chevron, blah, 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 blah. The shop put the money laundry share. They charged me to court. So when they charged me to court, we had to beg them that, okay, if they want to remove the money laundry, how much would they collect? They said we should go and bring 15 million uh, that they will remove the money laundry. Now, this is one part of the video. A lot of things will be unveiled. First things first, you heard it from Bob Risky. Um, EFCC charged them, charged him 15 million naira to remove the money laundry charge that was charged against him. If you remember when this case against Bob Risky starts, there was a money laundry charge, but from nowhere they removed, they dropped the money laundry charge. So obviously, Bob Risky paid EFCC 15 million naira to remove the money laundry charge. It's crazy that EFCC claim that they are fighting against financial crime. Do you understand? But they are deeply involved in financial crime. So they remove the money laundry. Anyways, let's continue. There's a lot of things in this um, call recording. Talk to my friend. I called my friend, you know, because I can't use my account. I wanted to send money from my account, but he said, I'm still under investigation. I cannot withdraw from my account. So I now called a few of my friends. You know, Polanco, LLA? Mm hmm. That Polanco here is my very good friend. So I called him. I told him. He was like, ah, no, I can't want to send the whole I can't want to send the whole he now gave me, I gave him my brother's account. He now sent eight million. Uh, he eight and one is already sent the same year. Yeah. I was even shocked sure that he can send that kind of amount of money. He said, uh, Omo Gideon, Omo Shomo Pega, a very nice person. So I called the Mola, the Mola in New York. He is my friend too. Mm -hmm. The Mola sent to one million. Uh, because I had to call the people I'm close to, people I trust. The Mola sent me one million. Yeah, the Mola sent me one million immediately. Transferred one million to my account. Then I called other few people because I can't start making call because I, I don't know who sets me up. So let me not start calling the the wrong people. Do okay, you understand? Sure. Uh, so I called the people I trust. So the, the money share complete fifteen million. I paid. Then I remove money laundry. Then I took me to court for spraying of money okay. and i know that the so you heard him after i paid the money to efcc efcc removed money laundry and they now removed that charge and took him for spraying money do you understand so efcc you people collect money to drop charges this is crazy and these are the people that want to fight for financial crime. Tomorrow night, you're going to tell us you will arrest Ayabelu. Are we sure that if you arrest him, you will not collect money for dropping charges? Wow. EFCC. This is crazy. But anyways, it doesn't end here. Let's continue. The old things, the old things started from, the old things started from when they gave me best female dress. You saw that video, Abby? That they gave me best female dress. Yes, that's yes, when the yes old I things did. Yeah. Yeah, that's when the old days started from you know, jealousy, everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we shall have got to court. I shall have told them that I'm guilty that ah, maybe because we will pity me or say, oh yeah, pay fine. I know. Or call community service. Sadly, the court sentenced me. So, you know, I was on my way to the prison. Then my godfather called me. And said, You will not enter that prison, don't worry. Let me make arrangements for an apartment close to the prison. That uh, is going to call the um it's going to call the controller in my that's overall in Nigeria and Abuja and I'm talk to them. They shall talk before I come back, shall they now took me to one apartment that I must not come out till I finish my sentence. That they um, that okay. The other said, said they should come and keep me here. That I mustn't, um, I mustn't go like enter data, but nobody should know that I'm not there. Yes, no. So they said the guy will call him money. Do you want to give them seven? Wait, 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 wait. Who is this Bob Risky's godfather that called the controller general of prison in Abuja? and instructed him that he should not let Bobriski to enter prison 
and the controller general of prison now gave Bobriski an apartment outside the prison. Do you understand? An apartment outside the prison that he should act, he should stay there and he will not enter the prison. So Bobriski didn't go to prison, obviously. Basically, the prison, obviously, is for the poor men and for the poor masses. So this is how the EFCC come and lie to us. Say they don't prove somebody, they don't arrest one big man for financial crime. But they go no go arrest the man, they no go sentence him or carry him. Go give him one law somewhere and he no go enter prison. This is what is going, going on in Nigeria. Do you understand? The law is only against the common and the poor man. Now the poor man, they go prison. But Bobrisky, one godfather somewhere, that godfather, you go come out. And the controller of prisons, the controller general of prisons, you have to come out and defend this. If not, me, I will continue rubbishing your name online, the controller general of prisons. So this is how they call you to remove prisoners. Eh? After the court have sentenced the prisoner, you will remove them. But that's not all. Let's continue. Mike Millionaire, I had to call Ellie Lane King because there's nobody for me to call. Ellie gave me, um, give me one, uh, two million, the balance of two million. So now the, so I'm supposed to come out in, um, I'm supposed to come out in what's it called, ending of July next month. Okay. Twenty nine. Bad guy. His father is a is a son. So first reach out to me his father spoke to me his father said we can apply for pardon okay that pardon the president because he is great Franz the bad guy i can't even believe this Franz the bad guy contacted bob Ruski and femi falano contacted his father and his father femi falano spoke to bob Ruski in order to divert justice and this same Faust, if this story is true this same files we have the audacity to come out and say he's fighting against the government for oppression that he wants justice he wants nigeria to be better so that like this you did carry yourself i don't want to believe that femi falano will bring himself down to this level a whole femi falano where be fella lawyer where we respect femi falano will engage himself in something like this wait wait, wait. what is the relationship between files and bobriski i be fast said they do Oh, okay. Who are we to crucify the homosexual? Most of them are done, they evolve from time. Everybody is a motherfucking hypocrite, though. No, oh, now that song, they make sense to me. Wait, I be found self, they do. This is crazy. Well, anyways, let's continue. Hey, now, wow. Nigeria. It's okay. Fedra that, uh, my, my, my kiss is Fedra. That's all that. The federal can actually pardon me. That's the president. That he can do it. That I, if, they, if they pardon me, I can even leave here by next week. Do you understand? I don't have to wait till like uh, ending of next month. Okay. okay. So the man started the pardon. He said he wants to send it to the uh, minister, minister of justice in Abuja. So minister of justice will now send it to president to approve it. But you know Nigeria now, Nigeria with the corruption and everything. You take it fast to him. That the man, the lawyer said they will collect 10 million naira for him to get. That that pardon will clear my name off the record. Of the record, which is not yes. bad. That which exactly. So, you know, there's nobody to call because, like, I have friends of all. You know, you don't know who set you up, you know, and they've not opened my account. All right, so based on this first voice note, based on Bobriski's narration in this uh, phone call, Bobriski is saying that Femi Falano collected 10 million Naira in order to wipe his name off the record. Wow! These are people I respected. These are people I look up to. Found the bad guy always talking about, yeah, I'm speaking up for the people. So you are also involved in things like this is really really disappointing. It's obvious that Nigeria might not go anywhere anytime soon. It's obvious. Say Nigeria, I have lost one hundred percent respect, respect for this. Unless if they come and come defend this one, saying a lie. But for now, uh, we we'll take what Bobriski is saying as the truth because Bobriski said all these things like he contacted uh, somebody to borrow him money 
and the person recorded everything. Now, uh, just in case Bob Risky go on argue, let me drop your number. Uh, this is your number, eh? Now, nah, why? So, this is your number. Your number ends with uh, 2208. That's what your number ends with. So, this is you. Actually, you cannot deny anything. So, EFCC, I will expect you people to bring to do a deep investigation and bring all the people involved to the dumb out of justice if you know you truly fight against financial crime and this particular crime went deep down inside your own custody and it's really crazy and the controller general of prison i don't know i don't know what it did happen but it's almost as if yes i want to know the godfather and why the controller of prison allowed them instead of putting Bobriski in a correctional facility they took him and gave him a lodge outside the prison i don't know that is allowed i didn't know that was allowed but anyways there are more videos to come do you understand this is just part one first part one we'll see where part two they be don't play <laughs> you gotta learn and you will learn the hard way i don't care don't play I said it. So that's VDM playing his role in consciously empowering Nigerians and Nigeria. And as a direct result of this video, the drama starts to unfold and Bob Risky hurriedly calls this person wanting to pay up. Bob Risky don't pay you. <laughs> as you can see, Bob Risky have transferred 4 million naira. Uh, to the guy, he has transferred the four million naira to the guy. What is so you see, he could have paid that money, but he needed this drama to cough the money out. And there are people who live like this. Do you see that if this guy hadn't had recourse to VDM or to any other means to get the money from him, your guess is as good as mine. The money would have just been history. There is a woman who told me that she and her husband they hold on to people's money when they can, they buy things from people. And if the person can't get the money, then they can't get it. They just hold on to it. Some people just have a philosophy of anything they can do to get one over on you, they will do it. That is why you stop people in their tracks. You stop projecting your sanity onto other people. Stop thinking that everybody else is reasonable and rational like you. Once they show you signs that they are not, just take it that they are not. If a person shows you who they are, accept them for who they are and act on it. And then be proven otherwise later. What is annoying? Before I transfer the money, oh boy, see me score. But Brisky, call, call, see me score. He says, send your account number and get your refund. Miss call, miss call. The guy no answer. He say, please send me your account number. Let me pay your money. The guy no answer. I call. He say, I'm still here asking for your account number. You want your money back? The guy no answer. Then the guy can tell and say, firstly, I need you, I need a written apology statement for blackmailing and to cover all expenses incurred towards your behavior. Now, but Risky say, I will send everything. I will send five million. <laughs> I'm going to make a video talking about it. This is, people don't understand that this is how life works. These are the things that we should have learned in school instead of learning how many legs a grasshopper has. We're supposed to learn how psychology works, learn how human beings work, learn how to navigate our human relationships, learn how to navigate life instead of learning how many eyes a butterfly has. Do you understand? That's why people are living in misery. It is a you decrease. Yeah, I just say you say come very down. You know now. You know what's annoying now is that the other part of the video I can't post it anymore. Now when you don't pay, they pay me. See, I know if you post the other side again, so that more names go, they come aside. Hmm? If for good, make more names, just the come aside because I can never understand what is going on in this country. So Bob Risky was sentenced by the court to be remanded for. Spraying money, they went to go and give him an apartment. According to his uh, call, they gave him an apartment. That's number one. Number two, EFCC, according to his call, collected 15 million naira to drop money laundry charge. That is crazy, bro. So you can pay EFCC to drop charge? I didn't know. Yeah, I was thinking, okay, these people are fighting for corruption. If you ever hear me, Criticize your old boy again, change my name. Me, or tell Martins Vincent, I will, I will never. When the institution has failed, my only advice to your old boy be someone that live on our black people. Not anybody on our own knack. What's their business? The government, ah, 
If the FCC, if the condolence, and we say, who are we? Who are we? If they inside their own system, they collected money? This is crazy. Next thing we know, EFCC invites VDM to an investigation. I'll say again that I'm very worried, always very worried about VDM, but what he's doing has to be done by someone. Otherwise, we'll continue the way we've been until the whole country perishes. All these years, it was the reign of Touch Not My Anointed, where even though people who masqueraded as pastors were raping women and stealing from the masses to the knowledge, to the very knowledge of the public, many didn't speak due to Touch Not My Anointed. Even when we spoke, those of us who did were not supported. So you see, evil thrives when good people keep quiet. And that has been the case with our country all these years. Right now, even at this very moment, the rate of swindling people out of their money is being checked just by VDM's actions alone. People are returning money to people whose cries they would otherwise have ignored. I just can't understand why there will be anybody who, unless they're also criminal-minded, will not be a VDM supporter. All right, uh, BFCC, I saw your press release, so let me respond to you people now. Except people who prefer to live with stupidity and preserve their safety while they suffer in stupidity. I understand VDM's thinking. You get to a point where you, you're like, rather than have this life and continue to live it this way, I will stand for what I would rather live. And if I'm not going to have that, then the life is not, it's not, it's just not worth it having it that way. That is what is going on here. All right, uh, BFCC, I saw your press release. So let me respond to you people now. So, uh, press statement. Executive Chairman of the Economy and Financial Crime Commission, EFCC, Mr. Ola Olukoyede, has ordered immediate investigation of alleged bribery allegation imputed to some officers of the commission by Idris Okunaye, aka Bobriski, in a viral video circulating across the country. Okunaye and S. Covid had alleged in the video powered by Martins Vincent Ote, aka Very Dark Man, that some unnamed officers of the EFCC collected the sum of 15 million naira only from him to drop only for from him to drop the money laundry charges against him in a swift reaction the efcc boss have constituted a team of investigators to critically look into the allegations to the end the commission hereby invites okuneye and Ote to make themselves available in lagos directorate to assist the investigations investigators on earth the alleged bribery i see what comments say how can you be a judge in your own matter you can't be the investigator of your own crimes Ooh, you guys better submit that makes sense to the relevant police you guys better submit yourselves to the relevant police department for proper investigations and necessary prosecutions in court you can't be trusted to investigate yourselves the case will die naturally that makes a lot of sense you know what do you say as a lawyer what do you say Say something quickly before the recording ends. As a lawyer, what do you say? Makes sense or not? Just yes or no? The guy has considered a All right. Exactly. Well, so, someone says the funny thing is that some of those benefit, who benefited from the 50 million might be part of the team that's just constituted to probe the office, uh, the offense. You see, that's, that's, that's why it doesn't make sense. Even about being called the FCC criminals, the arrest who boys later extorts them, the FCC should be scrapped. And this one says the next should be Falana. That man should lose his SAN title. I knew he has sold his hands since the issue of Abuja 25% discussion. Someone says this matter shouldn't end here as the integrity of two of our major institutions is at stake. The corruption that allowed him to avoid jail time is an injustice to those who serve their sentences. And for the sake of fairness and justice, this must be thoroughly investigated and those responsible held accountable. Incidents like these are the reasons why citizens have lost faith in our institutions. His effort should have been appreciated more, would have been appreciated more if EFCC is an independent commission. Nothing good can come out of a corrupt system. See, people don't have faith in it at all. Who are the investigators? I hope they're not the same members of the EFCC team. We need an in, in, independent team or additional or addition of investigators would have been appreciated. It's morally and not acceptable to be a judge in your own case. I appreciate you, Luca Ode, for the wonderful job for EFCC. Your reign is nothing but the best in the history of the commission, oh yeah? Mm. The case has put a question mark on the integrity of EFCC to the world. Okay, let me just end it here.
so who else is impressed? I am very impressed with the speed with which the EFCC chairman has reacted. If only things will be happening like this in Nigeria, I'm sure we'll have a very different country. Okay, so first things first. In everything this press release is saying, the press release did not even say the one that is within their own range. What do I mean by within their own range? Why didn't they say something like, the EFCC is 100% certain that Bobrisky was in the prison? I mean, because EFCC has the power to know that. You understand? Uh, Bobrisky is their suspect that they put in prison. Do you understand? It is their duty to be certain, to be sure that Bobrisky, they, they were supposed to be going there to check that he's there. Do you understand? So if the person that released this statement could not confirm that Bobrisky was in prison, then it's a problem. I don't know if people are getting my point. Secondly, before you invite somebody like me to come, you have to invite and make sure you do a deep investigation on your own officers first. Then when you don't get the results that you desire from your own officers, when I mean your own officers, I mean those officers that handled Bob Risky's file. Do you understand? The officers that handled Bob Risky's file, you need to bring all of them together, all the ones that handled this file. Do you understand? The one that was investigating him is IPO, everybody. Make sure you bring them together, investigate them thoroughly, check their accounts, check everything they were up to. When you are done with them, that's why you can say, okay, the EFCC wishes to invite Mr. Martins Vincent Hotel, aka a very dark black man. Do you understand? Now, you are telling me to come to Lagos and the headquarters of EFCC is in Abuja. It makes no sense. Rather, I would rather say you should tell Bob Risky to come to Abuja and you will investigate. Do you understand? Uh -huh. And lastly, the reason why I will not go to Lagos is this. Me, I don't have 15 million naira to pay for anything. Do you understand? And I don't have any godfather anywhere. Me, they don't come carry me go for prison. I don't have any godfather anywhere. Before now, took me for prison. And I don't have 15 million naira just in case when I want put something against me. Because now I can't trust you people now. I can't trust you. You can't decide to set me up. You can't decide to set me up. I don't trust you people, yeah? So, I don't think I want to go to Lagos. So, this is the headquarter here. Bring it here. Let them investigate it here. I am not coming. I don't trust you people. I will not go. Anything you want, first investigate your people. Do you understand? After that, you can talk to me. But coming to Lagos, that one is out of it. Do you understand? I know they go. And even if I decide, say I won't go. Let's just assume, say I decide. You go book me, get. What do you think about that? Let's go through this together. VDM only released that conversation. VDM only released that video with that conversation yesterday, September 24th. And within a couple of hours after the release, the EFCC chairman issues that statement on the EFCC account, wherein VDM was invited. Now, the facts are these. According to what I observe... The swift response by the EFCC chairman is admirable, yes. This is probably because he has nothing to do with the mess and wants it known immediately because we all know how it is in Nigeria. People will sweep things under the carpet as if nothing has happened when things go wrong. But in this case, the EFCC chairman clearly does not want to be perceived as such. You see, if Nigeria were to be running this way, we, 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 we would have a much better country. Secondly, that response was so swift that there is just no way. There is just no way that it was due. Because the way things are done is, in cases where a process has been alleged to have been hijacked, the office or the company involved would always conduct an internal investigation following which outsiders or anybody else, any third parties, can then be called in to follow up on the in-house findings if need be. This clearly could not have been the case here as the statement was released barely a couple of hours after that video was put out by VDM. And thirdly, the truth is that legally he really doesn't have to honor that invitation if he has good reasons. And then fourthly, think about this. The EFCC headquarters is in Abuja. VDM is in Abuja. Why is he being invited to Lagos? But Bobisky is in Lagos. Bobisky is the one who was heard making that statement. Why is Bobisky not being invited to Abuja instead?
But basically, we all know that he has got fathers because the way he goes about life, there's no way that he'd be doing these things that are not legal, that are against the constitution of the, of, uh, the country without having big, powerful people backing him. And so if he has got fathers, it appears that things are happening in the background because why is it VDM who we know we don't know to have godfathers that is being invited that sounds funny and fishy to me i would also think it's very risky for him to be going to lagos why is this not happening in abuja and even if it was happening in abuja seriously the in-house investigation was not conducted at all because it wouldn't have been done in two hours it will take a while then we will know okay they've done some investigations and now they're calling on vdm or Bobiski. And anyway, 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 anywhere at all, what really is VDM going to do? What is he going to be saying? What is he going to say to assist the investigation? In the first place, it will be to investigate it in house, calling Bobiski, who is able to tell them, yes, no, this happened, this did not happen. And then after that, if necessary, if need be, VDM, of course, I'm not speaking with authority on that particular point, you know, but. This is the way that it, it just makes common sense. And again, you know, finally, it will be only a bully that will get upset if William doesn't honor this inv invitation. Only a bully, not anyone who is sincerely interested in, in finding out the truth. Right? Because a person who sincerely wants to do the job and get to the bottom of the truth here will start by identifying the officers involved on that file. On this case of Bob Risky and the money laundering issue and him going to prison, that person will want to investigate all that first internally and they may not even need to call on VDM. Everything may end with the officers involved and Bob Risky. But if the ESCC chairman decides to huff and puff and blow angry and uh, get upset that VDM is not, in the, is not running this investigation, then it begins to detract from the whole from the whole idea. It begins to distract from finding out the truth. And I, I want to believe that with the swift action that he he took, this is a man who wants to keep his name clear of mud. And so let's hope that things play out positively. Perhaps we'll begin to see some light at the end of the tunnel for the country Nigeria. VDM is working almost like a government agent now, helping the system, helping the country, helping the government in doing things that they ordinarily should have been doing for the citizens. So this is why we should heavily support VDM. It's crazy. The plot thickens. I've caught up with what's happened now and Bobriski goes out to now deny the conversation saying that it was a false a false um, recording and that he never had such a conversation. He never even had a phone call. Not knowing that false has said that that wasn't the amount of money that they discussed. That it was a different thing that they had discussed. And at the same time, the senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, and also uh, false have sent warning letters to VDM asking him to apologize and to retract the um, allegations. All right. Um, first of all, I did not defame Uncle Femi Falano and I will never, ever, ever defame Uncle Femi Falano. Uncle Femi Falano, SAN, is somebody that I respect 100%. Not because of his position as an as a SAN, but because of what he has used the position to do, representing the likes of me. The likes of me that speak against the ills of the society, abuse of power, abuse of influence, and also the bad dealings of the government. Uncle Falano have represented the likes of me and a lot of other activists. I am not an activist, however, but he has represented a lot of people that I personally know. Now, one other person that he represents that made me love him more is Fela Nikola Pokuti. Fela Nikola Pokuti is a role model to me, and I saw the way he spoke fearlessly. And I emulated everything and I said, if I'll be on this earth, I will say it the way I feel it and I will say it straight up. So imagine Uncle Femi Falano defending somebody like Fela. That means I extended the love to Uncle Femi Falano. Imagine somebody like Fela, Jesus Christ. I mean, Fela came and said, Muhammadu Bari is an animal. And Muhammadu Bari was, an, was the head of state. 
and Uncle Fefe Fanano was his lawyer, how then would I defame him? I only reacted to the call Bobriski made, which he put allegations that he, he Bobriski, was the one that alleged that Uncle Femi Falano and Faust connected Uncle Femi Falano and blah, 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 and 10 million naira. Do you understand? And what I said is, I choose not to believe that Uncle Femi Falano will be associated with that. And if I will be disappointed, I will be disappointed because of his position in society and because I know what he represents. Now, I had an option of cutting that video at the part where he mentioned Faust. Do you understand? But I refuse to because I want an investigation on the matter. I want a thorough investigation on the matter. Now, let me even tell you guys what is funny. I have another one to post, which I will post tomorrow, that is from a totally different person again. Do you understand? I want a deep investigation on this issue. The EFCC was named. The controller general of prison was named, and then Uncle Femi Falano and Faust the bad guy. Do you understand? A deep investigation will clear everything. And if Bobriski is lying, he should face the law for using somebody as big as Uncle Femi Falano to do something like that. Now, again, imagine if that video did not come to me and somebody, an anonymous, just posted it online. That video would have just spread and people would have believed. I even I'm even 100 percent happy that what is happening now is happening now. Do you understand? So the thing will just break, the whole table will break, and what happened will come out. So Uncle Femi Falano, I or Sir Martin Vincent will never ever ever defame you. I will never, I will never ever defame you, and I did not defame you. Thank you very much. I still love you. You are my daddy. Yes, you are my daddy. I love you 100 percent Thank you very much. And what is even crazy is that on the top of my head, Uncle Femi Falano is an emergency contact. How did I even forget this? Yes, it's an emergency contact. Because to be very honest, yeah, they talk. Oh, ah, and to be honest, if person bad, even if the person get position and they talk. So I don't really don't talk and before say the day where we say one kind big person will get influence will come home. Now Uncle Femi Falano go represent me. So why would I defame Uncle Femi Falano? Please go back to my video, people. Thank you very much. Hello? But VDM did not directly accuse them. All right. Um, so in respect to what Faust the bad guy posted, a letter that says I should retract my statement and I should apologize um, for defaming him. Um, first of all, before Faust posted that, Sean Kuti called me and he said, I'm very dark man. I just finished speaking with Faust the bad guy. I want you to call him. I'll send you his number. I want you to call him so that you guys can talk. You know, and I said, Ebo, I don't want to talk to Faust. Then he said, um, no, you need to hear what he wants to say, you know? And then um, I sent Faust a message, we got on a call. And then when we got on a call, then he said he wasn't happy. Then I said, how far? Then he started talking, you know, I said, ah, he said, he was started talking about defamation, that he wasn't happy. Then I said, Faust, I thought you're calling me to tell me your own side of the story so that I will know what's up, you know? But um, I don't understand what's going on now. So at a point in the conversation, I felt like Faust was recording me, you know, and then I said, Faust, I feel like you're recording me. I feel like you're trying to get evidence for me or trying to make me say something so that you can hold me by my wrist, you know, and then when I said it, he could not defend that, you know, then he went on saying things like, um, since you know me on social media or my family, have you ever heard anything negative about myself or my father? I said, I have never heard anything negative about your father, Femi Falano. However, you yourself have heard something negative about you. Then he said, what have you heard about me? Then I said, uh, my bro, it is for my own consumption and not for me to tell you. You know, so it was almost as if he was trying to pick my brain to know what I know and the length of things that I know. Well, anyways, that's by the way. Then um, the whole conversation ended up with me telling Faust that, thank God you are a lawyer, so you will not need to pay a lawyer to stand for you in court. But as for me, I did not defame you and I'm standing that I did not defame you. So I will see you in court. That's number one. Number two, I did not read what Faust posted until later. And then when I read what Faust posted, I said, wait a minute. But Risky is saying that the voice call was fake. And now Faust is confirming that Bob Risky, they actually had a call. 
Do you understand? The only difference is that he's saying that Bobriski was the one that called him. Why Bobriski is saying that his Faust that called him? Faust is saying Bobriski has seen for three million. Bobriski is saying that Faust said he should pay a lawyer with his father ten million naira. Do you understand? Now, what I expect Faust to do, instead of addressing that letter to me, I expected you to address that letter to Bobriski, requesting that he should clear your name off that voice call and it should clear um uh, uncle falano's name of that call not you coming for me do you understand i wasn't the one in the record do you understand my reason for posting that is to expose corruption the corruption that states that bob risky used his mouth to say that instead of taking him to prison that they took him to a private lodge that EFCC collected 15 million naira from him to drop an allegation and to drop a charges that said he laundered money. Do you understand? And inside all this thing is calling your name and you are sending a letter to me. I would expect you to send that letter to Bob Risky. Do you understand? To be very honest, I did not defame Faust and Uncle Femi Falano. Now that's on the side. Now, as she stands like this, I am standing my ground to say. I still want to know what went down. Because going back to everything now, I saw there's a picture of Bobisky online where he carried luggage. You did go to prison, you carry luggage. Secondly, who gave Bobisky a phone to make call inside prison? Because they don't lock me up before. They remind me for Kujay prison now. I know say if you won't make call to your family, you go take you a process of telling one of the prison wardens to say you won't make call or bring you outside, they'll give you a phone. If you remember the number, fine and good. If you don't remember the number, turn you sabi. Then you cannot call the person you want to call. So how did Bob Risky get a phone to call files and he's requesting that files to give him three million? Again, another question is this which officer charged Bob Risky three million for VIP cell? We need to know. Do you understand? We need to know which officer charged Bob Risky three million. Because when they get all these amounts for, say they say they'll give up, they'll collect ten million, may they clear a name from the crime where he commits by a presidential pardon. You understand? So my dear brother Faust, um, I did not defame you. And and I will expect you to channel this energy to Bob Risky that called your name in that recording. And as for Bob Risky, um, like I said, I will post another recording from a totally different person entirely. Mind you, the first video I posted, I did not even post it complete. There are other side of the video. But I will post another one again today. I will post another one again today. Uh, yeah. I will post another one again today, confirming that this guy, man, through through no go prison. So is it that prison is for us where we don't get people? It's prison for us, the poor masses. Mm -hmm. It's prison for us, the people that don't have connection. Who, who is this Bob Risky's godfather that also influenced the clearing of his, uh, the clearing of his charges, his money laundry charges? So that is my question. Do you understand? It's pretty simple. I want to know what really happened, and I believe a lot of Nigerians want to know. That being said, some Nigerians, I see comments like, is Bob Risky the problem of the country? No, Bob Risky is not the problem of the country. However, the stories and the corruption surrounding Bob Risky is part of the problem of Nigeria. Do you understand? Now, just imagine. Imagine if it was a whistleblower that said the thing about the money laundry. You understand? And tomorrow now, you can't release the person or you go put down for one lodge. That person where you put for lodge now, come orchestrate, come plan the buying of the person where do whistleblowing. Do you understand? They cannot investigate the person that is inside prison again now. They will say, ah, this one, they prison. That means another person drunk. They don't know, say the person, they outside. This thing is very deep, but y'all don't understand. It's not about Bob Risky, it's about the corruption. Tomorrow now, you go carry your habelu. Do you understand? So what if your habelu pays and drop his charges and we think he's in prison? So how do you imprison politicians when they do wrong if the normal average people are paying to remove charges and are paying to stay in an apartment instead of a prison? Nigerians wanna get to their brain. Anyways, you all better don't play, else you're gonna learn. And you all learn the hard way. Peace. You can go back and watch the videos again. Right here you can see where the senior advocate is saying directly in that um, document that he never had any conversation with Bobriski. In fact, to quote that document, he says, we wish to state without fear of contradiction that our client has never in his life spoken to Bob Risky 
on his alleged pardon or on any other matter whatsoever. And this is from the letter that was written from Femi Falano to VDM. Okay, so that's where we're at. Um, yeah, so today is the 26th of September and this is how far the drama has gone.